So I've recently been playing a lot of competitive, playing against sweats a ton, but I've noticed that the best content on my channel is solo. I'm gonna show you guys in this video and I got some crazy kills of how to read people like an absolute boss. Don't forget, use code KenBeans in the item shop. Drop a like and video ideas down below. I'm gonna be looking and reading the comments and let's hop into this video, shall we? This guy right here, I'm fighting him in arena. He's a little bit of a sweaty sweat. And whenever someone creates two boxes like this and I see that there's no wall in the center of it, I usually just run directly in the center and just look for for him to edit so I can place a wall in this face. You want to read someone, it gets even better. Now I got players around me and I'm trying to like full tarp to this guy's box. So I'm just randomly starting to pickaxe and he hits me with a good edit and I end up taking damage. I check on the third party and I'm like, okay, he's not there. Let's get back to this. I drop down on the wall and he ends up getting another shot at me. So what I do is stay completely still. He edited on me twice instantly. So I'm waiting for the third time to shoot jump up and just reset my floor. When players aren't healing, you gotta be dealing just a little damage. So just let them edit on you. This fight right here, this guy was trying to get aggressive. Whenever I create two boxes like this, someone drops down on a stair and they're on one side only. Look how I edit out cone wall this guy. And to predict this guy, I edit this wall down, make it seem like I'm getting a peek over here, but I'm actually gonna edit the other one. And then now I got this guy in the blender. Me and this player were going at it. He actually really knew how to keep pressure up. So watch this move here. I'm weak, I'm trying to heal and he's attacking in my box and he's like trying to exploit in. I'm trying to hit a quick little pre-fire and I end up choking the whole thing. I end up getting the wall back. I leave the box for just a second. Now I'm putting pressure on him to take the wall back again. So I swing my pickaxe once and then I know if I just sit here and bait this peak that he's going to edit again and that's what I do and now that's how I get some return damage back. Reading an aggressive player, even if they're a pro, it's actually a lot easier than you think if you just stay relaxed. This play was probably one of my best peaks I've ever had in a very long time. I really like how I realized quickly what builds I can place in front of his face. And then I didn't jump to place the cone. I did that after I got the peace control first. So that way I can get really good timing. This play was just so clean. I ended up completely full box in this guy. But I noticed that one thing I did here naturally is if I want to mantle on someone who's one layer up like this, I read where he was, kind of realized he wasn't on the edge trying to get a peek. So I jump up to place a cone, block his POV. And then I use that time to mantle up and get closer to him. I realized in the moment that that was a really good play. And I'm going to start doing that more often as this fight continues i'm always looking and this is the best way even against someone who's really good to just mantle right up in their face mantling with sneak pumps is the best thing in the game it will catch anyone off guard I paired the mantle with a side jump at the same time. I max damage this guy and then I go in for a little full box and hit him with a little salt. Now here is some deadly prediction piece control right here. This play was super smooth. You'll notice I'm running up to the box, just swinging my pickaxe, going from one wall to the other when he edits out a side. Now I realize, okay, we have to try and trap him in the next box over. He got the wall though. All you have to do is very simple, just shove stairs and floors so it blocks his angle. Can't see me. Now what I do is I do a little double edit. Oh my, this piece was so clean. I love the way this went. <laughs> this is a specific move that pro players do to me all the time so i figured i'd share it with you guys starting out as a casual build fight i end up getting a double edit so i do a protective peek because it was at the start of a fight i noticed he left a wall open as he was tunneling up so i placed that wall edit it and then now he has nowhere to go besides the side jump if he happens to slide down his ramp a little bit because now he just got double edited naturally he would just go back down i'll have a free right hand peek so i see him playing weird i drop down shoot him and then reset my wall to make this even better when people drop like this notice how i'm looking down to place walls like as they're in the moment the action of falling down that's when i go for it you're gonna see right here fight goes on for a little bit i crack this guy again the second i see that edit happen i do the exact same move again right now i might have a shot on him. this is pressure and predictability 101 anytime someone edits down now they're never gonna be safe always look to claim a sidewall when people fall down it's gonna lead you to free kills now here's some general iq for people who want to get better i noticed there's a guy around me see how there's a box in front of him i know that if i can make this right hand peek before he gets to the front of that box i'll have a wall and he'll smack his face right into it notice how i don't make the edit and stand still i'm continuing my momentum to go through and make myself a harder target but a third party comes right through the box with a sniper
This is my most used high ground retake in Arena. Hit the rewind, I'll show you in slow motion. You can see it's very, very simple. Controller or keyboard, you can do this. The first time it doesn't work out. So the second time I do the same thing again, the only thing that makes this clip bad was the unoptimal edit. But as you can see, I literally had this guy full piece. The fight continues and I'm playing super careful because now I know I'm very weak, but I'm trying to get him off my back to heal. Long story short, you see how I'm patient. The second he grabs the wall, I edit the Kona. I'm quickly reading what gun he has out because if he has a shotgun, I know that he's going to look to pre-fire me. If he has an SMG, most likely he's going to look to replace my cone with it. I tried to make the shot as easy as possible on myself by going all the way to the left side. I thought I'd quickly show some duo piece control. I love how Jivan and I instantly realized that there was no flat above this duo's head. This is the freest piece control in the world because the second I claim it, Jivan knew to instantly start spraying and he knew that I get that double edit, boom, boom, and it's a quick double kill. Now check this clip out. I'm not in control of this fight, so I thought, let me be an aggressor. I sprint jump out and managed to get walls in this guy's face. He had it's down, blah, blah, blah. And I realized that he might panic and go out right away. I read him through his own builds to piece control the wall to the bottom right. Just literally looking at the player and piecing walls before they do it. You could see I'm doing this multiple times. Just literally looking at the player and trying to be the first one to place a wall. It's super simple. Sometimes the prediction goes wrong though. Like I don't catch this guy down below, but I make up for it with some really swift edits. <laughs> When you get into your next game, this is what you're gonna do. The fight start now, and I'm looking at this guy. He says he wants to build fight. So I said, okay, I'm gonna reload my shotgun, make sure I can get max damage, and I'm gonna play from the low ground. I'm just trying to bait him, and this guy's being very frantic. Once I realized he knew what was up, cones all around. This stops the fight from going up even further. Check out the window edits and the cone piece control. Best exchanges to start out a fight. Anyone with a little bit of practice can easily do this exact thing as long as they're not pressed up against their stair whenever they're trying to make a window edit. Distance is key when trying to predict people. Now I'm making this for my duo jive. And if you're watching this, you little trash can. I remember one day you asked me what move do I not do enough? It's this move right here. We're fighting in the air. And instead of running up to this guy's box, I play it safe by shoving the cone on the corner of the build. This is the safest way to get peace control in someone's box. Hands down. Homie at the end really tried to catch me to fall damage too. This is a swift play that usually at the start of every fight, I do this one time right away very quickly. Because if you wait too long, they're going to feel you out and know your play style. I shoot this guy and now I'm on the low ground and I hear him about to drop down on my box. So I take that initiative to climb up and over. Now I have height and I can easily control this fight. Homie did run out of mats a little bit, but the prediction and the peace control was still there. I wanted to show you a quick optimal edit that I saw Mr. Savage do one time and it made tons of sense. I'm falling down. I end up getting this wall in this guy's face and there's a stair in front of me. Next time you're in this position, make this four tile edit and shoot them through the little space between the stair and the wall. I could have definitely played this angle way better, but that edit is literally unstoppable from the other person's POV. One thing I do whenever I'm playing arena is not be too aggressive, but I also want to be aggressive if this makes any sense at all. How I do this is I go full peace control mode, but if I realize I'm about to run into a 50-50 edit, notice how I held the edit a second longer to read where this player was going. I really started thinking about this heavy when I was watching Booga on stream one day and he was doing this in literally almost every fight because people would just nonstop run at him. The easiest way to predict people quote unquote is to catch them when they're falling down. Like I said earlier, here's another example. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ken Beans Classic is still in style. First, we got to make this guy look silly with the boogie bombs that are no longer in the game. Next player comes into my box and I accidentally place a stair, but notice what I do with it. I slice it in the direction of where this player is so I can use the top as a right hand peek. Check this out. I showed this move back in a video so long ago, but because of the SMG meta, it really wasn't effective. But now some of these shotguns can hit with it. It's super safe because the enemy can barely see you. Now I'm versing a little yellow superhero skin. I'm getting some good peace control. Don't get me wrong. My mats are looking really low though. So it's kind of sketch. I get cracked super hard. And now instead of forcing an edit, I'm just 
just going to play my boxes. I ran out of mats, so I realized very quickly if I pause it that this guy's on a stair and he's not directly in front of my wall. So that means he's camping on the stairs. So I get really close to the wall and I try to dart right at him and just go for a max pump. Even with low mats, you could still predict what Bobby Johnny 6969 is going to do. To predict people, you also want to know how to be unpredictable. Here's a quick example of when I crack this guy, he runs away. Notice how I'm smacking on one wall and then go to the other right away. This makes it so he doesn't know which wall to look at. So he's going to hold his map out longer, which will give me a better chance to grab the wall and he won't edit back. Trying to predict people is not always that easy. Obviously, the better they are at running, the harder this is going to be, right? You can see though, as a player with a lot of experience, I still miss time when people are dropping down, going to the left, and I still pre-box the wrong things is what I'm trying to say. It's something you're always trying to work on. And then towards the end, you're just going to watch how I poop on Jive. If you don't like the video, Jiven's head still is going to be hurting to this day. If anyone's curious about the keyboard joystick that I use, I'm going to leave my affiliate link in the settings video that I made for it down below. Without further ado, it's your man Ken, and I'm thirsty as hell, so I'll see you in the next video. Peace.